Long before the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade, ending the constitutional right to an abortion, researchers noticed a link between women having abortion access and a reduced risk of violence from men. Now, in the wake of the court's decision, the opposite is happening, both anecdotally and in the data. Abortion restrictions have led to a significant uptick in intimate partner violence. The National Domestic Violence Hotline reports seeing nearly a 100 percent increase in calls. Our health reporter, Laura Santanam, spoke to experts about this for a recent story on our website. She joins me now. Laura, it's good to see you. Great to see you. So you've been talking to the experts reporting on this disturbing trend. Yeah. What are they telling you right now? So each year, roughly 12 million people are affected by domestic violence in the U.S. Um, you know, and, and, and part of what perpetuates that violence are, you know, control, isolation of, of, um, of uh, victims by the abusers. Um, you know, when we saw overnight in many places the, the you know, loss of access to nearby abortions, you know, just evaporate, um, you know, people began to, to suffer. And, you know, we're seeing preliminary data, anecdotal evidence that suggests that, you you know, all of the warning signs that we were hearing about before Dobbs came down are starting to materialize. And Laura, the National Domestic Violence Hotline says a 100 percent increase in calls. What does that mean? There is so much need going on right now, and it's coming through um, through the hotline in, in many places. I mean, you know, right now, the National Domestic Violence Hotline is hearing more than 3,000 calls per day on average, and that's the highest volume that they've seen ever since they were established in like, 1996, right? Um, you know, so it's it's just it's it's this massive uptick, and there's definitely you know just again, preliminary evidence pointing to um, Dobbs making things worse. And you spoke to a woman named Crystal Justice from the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Here's what she had to say. After the Dobbs decision, we knew that we were going to be hearing from survivors all over the country who were going to need critical support uh, to talk about the abuse they were experiencing, to talk about the fears that they were feeling, that now their access to reproductive health care had essentially been removed. And I think, Laura, it's really important to say that an abusive partner will use any tool in their toolbox to exert power and control over their victim. Laura, when it comes to tools in that toolbox, experts told you about an increase in something called reproductive coercion. What does that mean and what does that look like in real life? Reproductive coercion is is a form of domestic violence that um, you know that we're hearing more about, um, especially after Dobbs. You know what that means is a uh, an abuser could sabotage contraception, could intercept birth control, um, you know, could otherwise you know just hinder a person's ability to control their own you know, have control over their own body. In my reporting, I came across the story of a woman who was in an abusive relationship and could not leave her home, but she could receive birth control. Um, she got it through the mail and was able to keep control over that much of her life until her abuser discovered that she was receiving her birth control through the mail. He began intercepting her mail, got her birth control. Eventually, she became pregnant, and she was in a state where she could not access abortion. She also didn't have the financial wherewithal to go somewhere else where she legally could. So that, in that, in that terrible story, it, it's not a one-off. According to experts who I've been talking to, it's happening again and again in this country, and it's getting worse after Dobbs. The stories are so alarming and so disturbing, but what, what is the data showing? What, what do the numbers say about this right now? It takes time to, you know, get, like, big federal uh, data sets, but what we're seeing in things like, you know, the National Domestic Violence Hotline is a nearly 100 percent increase in these calls about reproductive coercion alone. You know, the experts there also told me that they've seen, you know, more than 20,000 calls related to non-consensual sex. So that gives you a sense of, like, how these power dynamics are being manipulated and used and, and people who, um, you know, are, are losing access to one thing to keep them, um, to give them some distance from their abusers. Laura, people will hear all this and wonder, what should I do if I need help? What if someone I know needs help? What can we tell them? Well, help is available. Um, the National Domestic Violence Hotline number is there. It's available 24 hours a day. It's 1-800-799-SAFE. You can chat at thehotline.org, or you can text START, that's 88788. It's, again, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, across the country. Uh, they're there to help make safety plans, find resources, figure out how, uh, how you can get from a terrible situation to something hopefully better. That is our health reporter, Laura Santanam.
Laura, thank you so much. Thank you.